17 points per game. Mark Moore, Marcus Becton, and Carl Moore Jr. round out the starting five. For the Red Hawks, they will go with Philip Russell. At the point, Russell was just named the Ohio Valley Conference Freshman of the Week. The shooting guard is Eric Reed Jr., the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Chris Harris rounds out the backcourt. The 6-3 and tournament championship. They went to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2014. We're ready to go. Brad Korn in his second year. Red Hawks come in with a 3-4 and four record. And the Gorlocks have the opening possession of the basketball game. Jason Coleman flashing out front is Carl Moore. And now it's Marcus Becton. Works right around the screen to the right arc for Coleman. And now it's Mark Moore. Played nearly 20 seconds. Shot clock down to seven here for the Gorlocks. Their post player, Moore, slides it right four to shoot. Becton looking, throws up a wild shot at the shot clock buzzer. It does not get to the rim. And the Red Hawks force a shot clock turnover here to start the ball game. And one of the Gorlocks needs to tie his shoe. Jason Coleman, now we're ready to go. Here's somebody down the end there with a man's head. I don't have to explain what a Gorlock is. <laughs> How many times do you think that question will be asked today? What is a Gorlock? A mythical beast that they named? Well, you know, if you watch the Time Machine, the first movie. Eric Reed with a driving layup. I think they were called the Gorlocks. They lived underground, you know, a beast. So maybe that's where they get it from the Time Machine movie. Their university is at the corner of Gore and Lockwood Avenue. So that is where Gore Lock comes from. Out front, Wynn Brown Jr. He is the leading scorer for this team. A lot of ball movement. Mark Moore, 18-foot jumper, is off the right side of the iron. And there's Nigel Russell pulling the rebound. Nigel Russell, just believe it or not, is Simo's leading rebound. Yeah, he's getting six a game. Eric Reed tries a triple. That one rimmed short. And it's tipped into the hands of Jason Coleman. Here comes Webster. Simo's athletics director, Brady Barkey, a Webster University graduate, and is in the Webster University Hall of Fame, inducted in 2016. Talked to Brady just a few minutes before today's game and uh, that's the connection and why this game's being played a three-pointer that will not fall for Jason Coleman and Chris Harris gets out on the run Harris slashing to the left hand could not finish and the Gorlocks secure the rebound it's Mark Moore lead pass for Win Brown pull up three is off the mark and Chris Harris with another rebound Chris Harris, Simo's third leading score at 12 per game. He was the lone Red Hawk that was on the preseason All-Ohio Valley Conference team. Eric Reed to the baseline, kick it into the corner for Russell. His three ball rattled out and unable to secure the rebound, Carl Moore. It'll stay with the Red Hawks, 20 on the shot clock here. 2-0, Red Hawks have the lead. We're just over two and a half minutes into the basketball game here from Cape Girardeau's Show Me Center, which opened in 1987 and renovated about four years ago. Here comes Brown to the rim, and he finishes. Kind of looked like Tyus Edney, 95 against yeah, the, uh, the, all Missouri the way. Tigers. All the way. That'll be the first basket for Wynn Brown, Jr. He averages 14 per game, their leading scorer, and we get a foul away from the play. Yeah, it's going to be on Moore. Nate Johnson will check in for the Red Hawks, replacing Manny Patterson. Hey, we got the foul charts up on the scoreboard up there. We got the, right the scoreboard side. fixed. One of the scoreboards, we've got the uh, HD video board up just over center court. Missed jumper by Philip Russell. Red Hawks ice cold to start this game. In fact, neither team shooting it that well. Simo has missed four shots in a row. Missed shot inside, and Nate Johnson rejecting the shot of Carl Moore Jr. right at the rim. No outside shots made in this game yet. Only two baskets were layups. 
Red Hawks have not scored in two and a half minutes. And the Gorlocks are one for six from the field. Red Hawks one for five. So the two teams have combined to go two for 11. And as just mentioned, a couple of layups. That's it. Mark Moore pulls the trigger on a three at the side of the backboard. But there is Carl Moore get the, getting the offensive rebound. And he draws a whistle. Nigel Russell picks up the foul. And he was in a very prone position, wasn't he? He was up in the air, and the shooter hadn't went up yet, so he bounced off of him and went to the floor. He could have really got injured on that fall, Eric. Free throws have been a major problem for the Gorlocks, and especially the guy at the line who makes his free throw. Carl Moore is shooting 27% from the line, 7 of 26. As a team, they're a 49% free throw shooting team. 40 of 82, but of course Moore hits them both. Seven for 26 from the line coming in, Jess, but not today. There's always a new day. And it's a 4-2 lead for the Gorlocks. Chris Harris, right of the circle, dumps it down low on the post. Jump hook, Nate Johnson can't get it. Red Hawks, one for six from the field, and, and a pass. And it gets loose from Jason Coleman. He was looking for Mark Moore, but it was behind him, and it will go to the Red Hawks. Yeah, a little bit too close for that hard to pass. 4-2. Webster with the lead. Philip Russell, the reigning Ohio Valley Conference Freshman of the Week, gives it up. Eric Reed kicks it right. Open three for Russell. Ring it up for Nigel Russell. And the first triple of this game. That ends an 0 for 5 drought for the Red Hawks with the Nigel Russell triple. Nigel. That's his sixth triple of the year. 29% three-point shooter so far. Missed shot inside, but getting the rebound was Becton. Now an open three for Brown, and he cashes in. Win Brown has both field goals for Webster, who takes a 7-5 advantage. Chase Thompson takes off his shooting jersey. He's headed to the scorer's table as Nate Johnson finishes right at the rim to tie the game at seven. Nate Johnson, Jess, in the game against Incarnate Word, the opening game of the Thanksgiving tournament down in Texas, gave the Red Hawks 14 points in 14 minutes, Jess. He was seven for seven from the field against Incarnate Word. Accelerating low as Coleman, a kick out. Moore tees up a three. That rimmed off, and there's Nigel Russell for another rebound. Philip Russell on the move. Russell through the lane, kick out, open three. Chris Harris left it short. Tip in by Nate Johnson. Oh, that's a beautiful tip in, wasn't it? Reached out, extended to his right, one-handed, and just kind of shot it back. Red Hawks with a 9-7 lead. Jason Coleman, the pull up from just beyond the free throw line. Off the front of the rim, and Harris runs. Out front, Philip Russell finds an open read for three. That's a little strong. And the rebound, Mark Moore. Gorlocks on a three-on-one. Left corner, it's Brown. He beat Eric Reed into the paint and flips it up with the right hand, but it wouldn't fall. And the loose ball grabbed by Carl Moore, slapped away by Eric Reed. It'll stay with the Gorlocks. Lead for Simo. Jess, my better half, the uh, lovely and talented Donchon, chips in with uh, a nugget here about the Gorlock. Give it to you in a moment. Inbounds play comes to Marcus Becton. Now Mark Moore feeds it for Wynn Brown to the baseline. Had it poked loose by Dylan Branson. Chase Thompson comes up with it. Outlet to DJ Ni or DQ Nicholas. Comes into the paint and had it swatted away by Mark Moore. Jess, the Gorlock, it was actually designed by the Webster staff and students through a school contest. And if you want to know what a Gorlock looks like, it has the paws of a cheetah, the horns of a buffalo, and just the face of a St. Bernard dog. So everything you always wanted to know about a Gorlock, Eric Reed with the turnover. Here comes Brown, and he will. I'm good with what I know right now. There we go, the Gorlock. 9-7. Red Hawks with the lead. Webster trying to tie it or take the lead themselves. 
back to into the color gives it up for Brown his jumper is good from 15 seven already for Brown who averages 14 their leading score and he's tied the game 9-9 we are almost seven minutes into the game here at the show me center Nicholas who's just checked in gives it up for Eric Reed works his way into the paint now it's Dylan Branson slashing to the left baseline and a whistle as Branson gave it up to teammate Philip Russell and uh, the whistle is a foul coming up on the Gorlocks. He said number 44 is what I thought he said. Into the game, Bryce Woolridge for Webster. Woolridge who comes in averaging seven points, three rebounds so far. Webster is one and five so far this season. Red Hawks three and four. Chase Thompson had his uh, shot partially rejected there as he tried a spin move on the baseline. Defended by Nate Jones. All you need to do is see that spin move there by Moore and you can see how quick he is. Jacob Wittishek has checked into the game. Moore gives it up to Wittishek. Wanted to get a look from three. Passed up on it. Works it low to Nate Jones. Missed the shot right at the right baseline. Chase Thompson corrals the rebound. Here come the Red Hawks. Tied at nine to the baseline is DQ Nicholas floating it in using the window. Nicholas, his first basket off the bench. Red Hawks apply some mild pressure. Now they run a trap. At the ball handler, Win Brown, they drop the trap. Winnishek, the right elbow, gives it up. Behind the free throw line is Woldridge. Woldridge looking, picks up the dribble, finds the cutter. Brown to the right hand, banked it a little strong. Loose ball and grabbed by Jones, and he lays it in. Nate Jones, the 6'5 freshman from Huntsville, Alabama, has tied the game at 11. 11.38 to play here in the first half. Philip Russell tries a triple, spins around and out. Offensive rebound, Dylan Branson. His follow is right there. Dylan Branson, his first points off the bench. I like to see that. He got the rebound right there in the paint deep and goes right back up with it. Yes, Dylan Branson has played in all eight games. That is just his second field goal of the year. Deep three, Mark Moore in and out. Branson, the rebound. Dylan will run the break. Finds DQ Nicholas. Into the left corner, Philip Russell. Nice pass to Thompson, who can't finish. Got his own miss, and on the follow was fouled. And Chase Thompson. And headed to the free throw beautiful line. Path. Catered in the heart of the Midwest with all the charm you could ever hope for. Yes, Hoosier Hospitality is alive. So far in this game, Chase Thompson is at the free throw line here for the Red Hawks. And he knocks down the first. Thompson, the freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. He's played in seven of the eight games for the Red Hawks. Left the second free throw short, but uh, gets his own offensive rebound, and the Red Hawks will reset, leading 14 to 11. On to the 11-minute mark. Thompson out front, a three, comes up short. And the ball knocked out of bounds, touched last by Nigel Russell, and it belonged to Webster as their starting post player. Carl Moore Jr. will check back in. Simo, 6 of 16, shooting 38%. Gorlocks, 23%, 4 out of 17. Both and teams, 1 for 6 from 3. Gorlocks uh, slightly leading in the rebounding department, 12 to 11. Jason Coleman leans in, got the whistle. In the paint against Dylan Branson. And we'll see Jason Coleman at the free throw line. Coleman just one for six from the free throw line this year, 17%. And that one spins out on him. He is out of Memphis, Tennessee. Went to Overton High School there. And he will have one more foul shot. Now one for seven this year from the strike. 
Simo with a 14 to 11 lead. Coleman swishes the second free throw. A lot of discussion on that last foul by yeah. Branson. I think he's saying, if I go straight up, how can, you know, he leaned into me. But, you know, that's an old call that's been made for years and years. Good offensive people get those fouls. Nigel Russell, open triple. That rimmed off. And the rebound pulled down by Carl Moore, Jr. And the outlet pass gets slapped away. It'll stay with the Gorlocks. We are midway through the first half here from the Show Me Center. The Red Hawk women lost to a good St. Louis Billiken team here last night. And Coach Rika Patterson's squad back in action tomorrow at 2 o'clock as they welcome the Hornets from Harris Stowe State out of St. Louis. Jumper is good for Mark Moore from 16 feet. From Hillsboro, Missouri, Mark Moore. And we're tied at 14. Dylan Branson works his way to the left baseline, gives it up for DQ. Nicholas fires at right perimeter, a three ball. Chris Harris off the mark. Red Hawks ice cold from three point range, but they get the offensive rebound. Nigel Russell falling down, and we're going to get a reach in foul here on Webster's Bryce Woolridge. who is a native of Flower Mound, Texas. Woolridge, Nigel Russell will head to the Red Hawk bench. Eric Reed, SEMO's leading scorer this year at 15 per game is back on the floor. Eric Reed, who has 15 three-pointers this season. He and Philip Russell each with 15. Nice finish on a reverse off the window from the right hand of Manny Patterson. And the Red Hawks take a two-point lead, 16-14. Loose ball on the floor, and we're going to get a held ball between Jason Coleman and Manny Patterson. Possession arrow is going to give this possession to the Red Hawks. You know, you talk about those threes, Eric. Philip Russell has only taken 29 and made 15, so they'd probably like to see him take a few more. He leads the Ohio Valley Conference in three-point percentage, he Philip Russell. Shoot 50% from three. Well, keep an eye on the college football for you. Oklahoma State and Baylor in a good one. Eric Reed with a hard drive to the basket, and he is fouled and will go to the line. Right now, they've got six minutes to play in the game for the Big 12 championship. Ninth-ranked Baylor leading fifth-rated Oklahoma State, 21-16. Fourth quarter, six minutes left. If Oklahoma State would lose. That would open up a spot for potentially Notre Dame, but we'll see. That Alabama-Georgia game is at 3 o'clock Central Time. Eric Reed cashes in on both free throws. Just Eric Reed up to close to 80% from the line now. He was just a 61% foul shooter last year. We had him on the Red Hawks coaches show from Wings, et cetera, and he said, talked about how much time he put in working on his free throws. Yeah, and that's exactly what it takes. That's a, a shot that, you know, anyone can improve on, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that he did that because he's such an outstanding player. If you have a little weakness, like work on your weakness, and he evidently did it. Here's Reed, takes it to the hole and draws another whistle. I believe Jason Coleman will get flagged. And more free throws coming up for Eric Reed. Came in at 79%, 23 of 29, but he's two for two. And just there's just an example. You can get rewarded if you attack the rim. And Eric Reed has done on consecutive possessions. Rewarded with free throws. And the first one he rattles in. It's made three in a row from the stripe. Red Hawks up by five, their largest lead, 19-14. Dylan Branson will check out for Southeast. One more coming here from Eric Reed, Jr. Swish. That is six for Reed to lead Southeast. And it's a six-point advantage for the Red Hawks. Jason Coleman deep on the dribble out front. 
Works around the screen, drops it off for Brown. Win Brown, jab step against Philip Russell. This is gonna be a good matchup, Brown and Russell. Yes, it is. And Brown got a screen, little pick and roll feed for Carl Moore, and he finishes at the rim. Brown gets the assist. Carl Moore, who is from Jennings, Missouri. Three ball, Eric Reed, ring it for Eric Reed. He was way out on that one. First triple for Reed, who led the OVC in three-point shooting last year. 23-16, the lead is seven, the largest for the Red Hawks. Marcus Becton uh, pushing the issue on a drive against Chris Harris. Match up, first time these two teams have ever played men's basketball. Southeast Missouri State, Division One, Webster University, D3. And right now, Simo is on top by seven, 23-16. Gorlocks with a possession. Carl Moore against Manny Patterson. Drops it down low, and a double team comes to face Jason Coleman. He loses the ball, but stolen right back by Wynn Brown. And the Gorlocks will get a three in the left corner. Brown splashes home the tray. One thing about it, when these... Stars of the team come to play here in this facility. They don't have any trouble hitting the goal, do they? Brown's the leading scorer, and he's showing you why right quick. And we get a foul call. That's team foul number seven on the Gorlocks, meaning DQ Nicholas will get free throws here. The sophomore from Atlanta. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Eric Reed going to the line. Reed is four for four from the stripe. Nine points and missed it. Rebound to Patterson and he puts it back in. Offensive rebound and the putback from Patterson, and the lead is six for the Red Hawks. 25 19. Win Brown Jr. Brown already with 10 in this game, and missed shot inside by Webster, but they get the offensive rebound, and Carl Moore is able to follow it in. That's six for Carl Moore, their starting post player. Moore. And the Red Hawks unable to cash in as they see their lead trim to four. Mark Moore, they've got two Moores on the floor, Carl and Mark. Slashing into the paint. Yeah, he dragged that back foot and it's called for travel. If you didn't see Brown. it, you could hear it. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly right. That'll be a turnover. That'll be the sixth turnover on the Gorlocks. 25-21. Red Hawks shooting 39%. Webster, 35 25-21. Simo. Eric Reed into the right corner. DQ Nicholas fakes the three. Now puts the ball on the floor in against Brown, and as he went to the left hand, that shot I think was altered by Moore in there. It's off the mark, and then Philip Russell gets his hand into a passing lane, creates a turnover. Eric Reed to the rim, got it. No foul called, but off the window, Eric Reed Boy, continues that was a good, his sizzling good first screen by Matty Patterson, wasn't it? That's like an offensive tackle, and you run it behind him. 27-21. Mark Moore all the way to the left baseline gets the whistle. And a former Hillsboro Hawk will go to the foul line. By the way, if you're tuning in the game, you're watching on ESPN Plus or you're listening on the Red Hawks radio network, drop us an email. We'll read it on the air. Our email address is SEMORadio at gmail.com. SEMORadio at gmail.com. And Mark Moore. At the line. And the first foul shot is good. Moore only been to the line twice this year, but two for two, now three for three after knocking that one down. Three points for Moore. His sophomore season as a Gorlock. 
And he got them both. I think we're going to be talking at halftime, Jess, with the former Webster Gorlock, Brady Barkey, who is the athletics director here at SEMO. And catch up with the SEMO AD. Nice move and a finish at the rim by Manny Patterson. That is six for Manny. 29-23. Marcus Becton, wing left. He'll shovel it to Nate Jones. And a bounce inside for Stephen Hawkins. And he just checked into the game and gets his first basket. Hawkins, who is from Cape Coral, Florida. 29-25. Red Hawks lead is four. Three ball in the right corner, Eric Reed. Boy, that ball spun around the cylinder and popped out. Here come the Gorlocks. Woolridge works left around a Nate Jones screen to the left elbow. Slides it back for Becton. Comes into the paint, loses it, but it comes to Mark Moore, who just picks it up and lays it in. Fortunate bounce there for Webster. Yeah, Mark Moore was right in the right spot. He just right on the right uh, side of the goal and ball bounced right to him. 29-27. Red Hawks by two. Chris Harris kick it left. Wide open three. Eric Reed. No good. And on the deflection, Philip Russell resets, gives it up to Chris Harris. He misfires from three-point range. Red Hawks scuffling from that three-point arc right now. Simo is two for 14 from three, Jess. They've shot 14 three-pointers here in the first half. Jumper from just beyond the free throw line. Draws a whistle. And Bryce Woolridge from the line so far this season through six games. And the lefty misfires from the free throw strike. Keeps the Red Hawk lead at two. Woolridge, 6'1", 180 in his sophomore season. Flower Mound, Texas, his hometown. Missed both free throws, but uh, the loose ball comes to the Gorlocks, and the jumper goes down for Stephen Hawkins. Offensive rebound, second field goal off the bench for Hawkins, and that ties the game at 29. It's a 6 nothing run for the Gorlocks. And Nate Johnson has the ball in and out of his hands, and then the Red Hawks lose it out of bounds. I don't think he should have kicked that out, do you, Branson? He made a good drive in there, got close to the bat. He's big enough to put that ball in there. Uh, I know it's what you do, you know, if you think you're going to be contested pretty bad, just kick it back out. But he was right there too close for a big man. Gorlocks can take the lead in this game. We've had four lead changes and five times we have been tied as we are currently at 29. Mark Mason or Mark Moore playing directing traffic out front gives it up to Marcus Beckton and as he drives Dylan Branson is called for a touch foul. Six team foul on the Red Hawks. Marcus Becton from Chicago, Illinois. Here's his free throw. I'm telling you, it has been a real struggle from the free throw line, just as a team. I don't think I've ever heard of a, a team that shoots under 50% from the free throw line. They're 49%. No, I've never heard of it. It has been a real issue for See the Gorlocks. a little bit of an example of it lately. With Webster. He's got one. He's got three. He's got one. He's got three. One more. Marcus Becton to give the Gorlocks the lead. And he misses both of them. Tied at 29. Philip Russell will bring it here against Mark Moore. Two hands the pass to the left arc. Eric Reed slashing kick in the left corner. Russell a triple. No good. Red Hawks now two for 15 from three-point range. And just on the surface, you say, boy, they've shot 15 threes here in the first half. Brad Korn may not be happy about that, but you look at the looks that they're getting like that. Yeah, yeah. Philip Russell, you have to take that you shot. You do. You have to take that shot. 
up front, Nate Jones against Nate Johnson. Now it's Jason Coleman. Wing left, works around a screen, pulls up for a three. That's an air ball. Both teams trying to get something going offensively. Eric Reed breaks the 29-29 tie. And for Reed, that is 11 points in his 14 minutes here in the first half. Dribble drive to the rim, unable to finish Mark Becton. And the Red Hawks get out on the run, leading 31-29. We're under 90 to play here in the first half. Eric Reed finds the cutter. Nigel Russell for a pretty finger roll. Give that assist to Eric Reed. And a timeout called by 20-year head coach Chris Bunch. Lives in Kirkwood. 33-29, Simo with a four-point lead. We've got a minute 12 to play here in the first half. Mark Moore on the dribble. Near the center jump circle against DQ Nicholas. Bounces for Stephen Hawkins, and he lost the handle. Chase Thompson went to the floor, outlet Chris Harris. Harris spins away from a defender. Now it's DQ Nicholas slashing into the color. Now backs it up on the dribble. 51 seconds to play in the first half. Nigel Russell on the baseline, a kick out, open three for Thompson. That came up short, offensive rebound missed there by Russell. They throw it ahead for Nate Jones, and the Red Hawks get back. Jones turns it over. So 38 seconds to play here in the first yeah, half. Yeah, good defense there by Russell coming down and couldn't get to him to block a shot or anything like that, but did, I think, get his hand on it and it deflected off his knees for a turnover for the Red Hawks. Philip Russell bounces for Chase Thompson. Believe it or not, just Philip Russell coming off a career high 21 points has not scored in this game. And a steal for Ch or Chase Thompson lost the ball. And Mark Moore will drive down under the basket. Fans it out right perimeter for Nate Jones. And as he went to the rim, we get a whistle. 33-29. That's number two on Harris. And let's see if with 10 seconds, Brad Korn leaves Harris in there with two fouls. He is going to. Harris uh, kind of has a knack for hitting uh, buzzer-beating shots, Jess. The Red Hawks win at Incarnate Word in the Thanksgiving tournament. Hit a three-pointer at the buzzer in a tie game to beat Incarnate Word 79-76. Jones, who is from Huntsville, Alabama, gets both free throws. Simo's lead is two. Let's see who takes the last shot. Six seconds. Harris gives it up to Nicholas to the baseline with 3.9. And the officials will halt play with a whistle. And that is going to be free throws here for DQ Nicholas, who is an excellent free throw shooter. In fact, he has not missed a free throw this year. He is nine for nine. However, he did miss a... A three-pointer earlier, but not a free throw. 33-31 Red Hawks. Nicholas buries the foul shot. He'll have one more. Chris Harris knifes in to pat him on the backside before the free throw. Dips, flips, and misses. Got his OL. It was tipped away. Loose ball. And stepping out of bounds was Nicholas, who launched a shot, trying to get it away before the buzzer. And there are 0.8 seconds on the clock. And the Gorlocks will inbound. Jason Coleman to inbound. Win Brown from center court. Just off the mark. Jesse had the distance. That ball looked like it may be close. Off the bench, and Nate Jones scored for also coming off the bench. They were picked to finish third in their conference this year, the Gorlocks, and they will have the opening possession. 34-31, thanks to Brady Barkey, who joined us at halftime. Gorlocks trying to inch a little closer here. Jason Coleman on the dribble, deep on the left wing. Accelerates into the paint against Harris, fell down, and he was tied up. 
Harris got his hands on the basketball, and that will go to the possession arrow, which at the moment is pointing toward the Red Hawks. Well, did you find out any more about Webster? Yeah, I did. And Brady Barkey said he uh, had a, a wonderful time attending Webster. Before he met his, uh, his bride. Well, that was worth it right there, then. She, well, they made a, a big run in women's basketball while she was there, Jess, and she actually went into the Webster University Hall of Fame before Brady did. Is she a did. basketball player? Yes, she, oh, wow. she beat him into the, into the Hall of Fame. 34-31. Inbounds play is swatted. And again, the Red Hawks will try an inbound. Simo leading by three. We are just over 30 seconds into the second half. Nice little give and go, Eric Reed to Manny Patterson for the deuce. Boy, I tell you, passes like that don't get any better by Philip Russell. 36-31. Mark Moore guarded tightly by Eric Reed. Moore with four points, in a, or I should say six points in the first half. Wynn Brown around his screen, runs it up with the right hand, and it's a little strong. Rebounded by Russell. Throw it ahead to Reed. One-on-one -on -one with Moore. Blocked from behind. Jason Coleman getting back on defense and saving the Gorlocks a layup from Eric Reed. Jess, they were playing the game with one of the tic-tac-toe <laughs> pieces still on the floor. How about that? I didn't notice it. Did you? What was that? <laughs> it was still out there from halftime games they were playing. And there's the first basket for Philip Russell, a 14-foot pull-up jumper. 38-31. The lead is seven. Red Hawks on a 4 nothing run to start the second half. Again, Baylor has beaten Oklahoma State in college football today, so the Cowboys of the Big 12 are out of any talk of the playoffs. Well, it's All not right. Patterson's fault. I mean, he's standing yeah. on the line waiting for the shooter. From the line to our right, Moore knocks it down. One more coming here from Carl Moore. And that one would not drop. 38-32. The lead is six points for the Red Hawks. Here's a dribble drive and a finish by Chris Harris. Went to the left hand. That is the first basket for Chris Harris. Think about that in the first half, Jazz. Two of Simo's starters, Philip Russell and Chris Harris, did not score in that first half. Yeah, and both of them are capable on any given night being your leading scorer. Mark Moore bounces low to Carl Moore, and he gives it up to Coleman. Now a nice little shovel underneath. I think Manny Patterson may have blocked the shot of Marcus Becton. Now we get a whistle, and I think we're going to get a held ball or we're going to get a foul. Let's see. Possession arrow would give it to the Gorlocks, and that's what we're going to get a held ball. And Nate Jones will check back in, replacing Carl Moore. 40 32. Hope you had a chance to hear our halftime interview with the director of athletics here at Southeast Missouri State, former Webster University Gorlock, Brady Barkey, who not only played basketball, but was on a golf team. He said his plan was to go to Webster just uh, as a scholarship athlete, play basketball, and then join the golf team because he got to play free golf. So he became a golfer. <laughs> yeah. This jumper by Moore. Here come the Red Hawks. Philip Russell behind the back dribble, stops at the point, snaps a pass to Russell, dumps it down to the post. Patterson, oh, a flop and an offensive foul. Good defensive play there by Nate Jones. Jess, you increase your odds by a lot if you just make sure you hit the deck on a situation. Like Absolutely. That. First you don't hit the deck, you're not getting the goal. Yeah, first side of contact. Because he was in a bad spot because Manny was going to put the basket in. He was he was too deep. Wynn Brown gets by Philip Russell, who reached out and 
fouled him. That time Russell was beaten and tried to play some defense with his hands, and the officials got him. Lead is eight, 40-32. We're almost three minutes into the second half. Brown tees up a 17-footer. Now they're going to say his foot was behind the arc. It's a three-pointer for Brown. His third three, 13 points to lead the Gorlocks, and he's cut the lead to five. Pass down low for Manny Patterson and draws some contact from Jason Coleman. And free throws coming up for Manny Patterson. Got an email here from Justin Kohler. Says shout out to Mark Moore of Webster. Two sport athlete at Webster just finishing up a men's soccer season. The men's soccer team won the conference championship and Moore was first team all conference. How about that? Another multi-sport Gorlock. We mentioned Brady Barkey, the SEMO athletics director. Mark Moore, also a member of their conference championship soccer team. Manny Patterson can't hit it from the free throw line. Manny among the conference's leaders, 88% from the field, or from the free throw line. He's got eight points. The lead is five right now for Southeast. One more coming from Manny. Rattles out, off the backboard, and back in. That was a good roll, Jess. Yes, that's uh, about as good as it gets, Eric. You don't bounce around that much and stay in. 41-35, lead is a half a dozen, near steal, Nigel Russell, and the ball's loose, picked up by Nate Jones. He will feed Beckton to the rim, had it rejected. Forty-one thirty-five. the lead remains six, seven on the shot clock here. Officials are conferencing. just ahead of immediate timeout. Oh, they're, they're going to put 25 on the shot clock. That's it. He was showing 25 with his fingers. The official, I thought they were, maybe were calling a foul on Nigel Russell, who is number 25. That was not the case. So 25 on the shot clock. Mark Moore had his shot blocked, and it comes to uh, Philip Russell. Red Hawks get out and run. Russell, a deep three. That one came up short. Rebound to Patterson, and he was fouled. Manny a little frustrated. Swats the padding on the basket stanchion off to our left. And more free throws for Manny. He was just one of two a moment ago. I think he's a little disgusted because it's hard for him to get a shot off right now, on, you know, in close, isn't it? He's uh, getting hacked a little bit. But that's the, that's the position you play. When you're in the paint, and I don't care if you're a guard and you go down through the middle, everybody likes you. Everybody comes to you and wants to wipe your face off or whatever they can do for you. Patterson, three dribbles, bends at the knees. It's on the way, no good. So Manny, who made... 12 of his first 13 free throws to start the year has now missed two of three in this game. Lead is six, one more coming for Patterson. The former Green Bay Phoenix. Got it. Nate Johnson will replace Patterson. And he gets a high five from his coach, Brad Korn, and the assistants as Manny heads to the bench. Just ahead of immediate timeout, we'll get one at the next whistle. Marcus Beckton deep on the left wing for Webster, who trails by seven now, 42-35. Beckton passed up the 17-foot jumper. Good defense by Harris as he rotated out. Nine to shoot. Woolridge gives it up to Jason Coleman, slapped away by Chris Harris, and that'll get us to immediate timeout, 15-41. Simo with a seven point lead and a shot clock violation on the Gorlocks coming out of the timeout. Yeah, they only had three seconds to get that shot off. And 
first shot was partially blocked and that made that case for the shot clock. 42-35. Jumper all over the rim, dances out. Johnson with a putback attempt and on the second follow, not only did he get the bucket, but drew the foul. Three point play opportunity for Nate Johnson. Lead is nine, Nate Jones checks out and back in to the game comes Carl Moore Jr. Here's the free throw by Johnson, misfired. Simo, four for six from the field here in the second half. 44-35 and Win Brown able to score for the Gorlocks. 15 for him now. Having a good game. Nigel Russell curls into the lane. His runner rattles around the cylinder and drops. That's seven for Nigel Russell. The lead back to nine here for Southeast. Crossover dribble by Wynn Brown. Jump stop, leans in with a floater, banked it strong, and Nigel Russell tried to save it. Now it's Philip Russell throwing it up into the air, and the littlest guy down there, Brown came down with it, and as he drove to the basket, his layup attempt rattled out. Loose ball foul coming up here on Simo. On Eric Reed. Mark Moore and Stephen Hawkins checking in here for Webster. 46-37, it's the largest lead of the game for the Red Hawks. DQ Nicholas will give Philip Russell a breather. Bryce Woolridge trying to get it in, he does to Hawkins. Wide left, Hawkins backs it up on the dribble around the screen. Shot clock at 12, Woolridge with a crossover. Shovels it back to Matt Moore. It was also on the Gorlock soccer team. And a three-pointer is good for Brown. 18 points for Wynn Brown, and we've got a six-point game again. Brown's keeping them from uh, getting a double-digit deficit. Open three for Chris Harris. Rattled out for the Red Hawks. Ice cold from three-point range. They are now two for 18 from three. And once again, Win Brown, 20 points. And it's a four point game. The Red Hawks. You don't become a legend by being distracted. Gorlocks have made it a four-point game and forced the Red Hawks to get a timeout. Open look for Nigel Russell. His three won't go. Boy, Simo really struggling from three-point range. Just two for 19. Yeah, and they had a nine-point lead and had a free throw coming, but Brown will not let Webster go away. Yeah, Brown, Brown scored their last seven, Eric. Get a two, and then a three, and then another two. And... Kept Southeast here at bay with the 46-42 lead at the moment with 13.04 to go. It's a 20-point game for Wynn Brown, Jr. Inbounds play comes to Bryce Woolridge. Woolridge gives it up to Hawkins. And yeah, he shuffled his feet. I don't think he thinks he walked, but he, you shuffle those feet before you bounce it. Dylan Branson will check in for Simo, replacing Chris Harris. 46-42, Red Hawks with a four-point lead and the ball. We tick under 13 to play here at the Show Me Center. Evansville will be in here on Wednesday. Purple Aces driving to the big rim is Reed. He got it to go in the foul. Eric Reed, Jr., chance to extend this lead.
Boy, for those who think that Eric Reed is just a jump shooter, Jess, he can really finish around the basket. <laughs> Did you see how high he was on that? I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's not that tall. He's what, 6'3", 6'2"? He's got an incredible vertical leap, Eric Reed. By the way, here's our email address again. It is SEMO Radio at gmail.com. S-E-M-O, SEMO Radio at gmail. Open three for Mark Moore. Well, that was a line drive three, and it went through. And Stephen Hawkins is down and grabbing at his left toe, almost like a, a cramp here. Let's see. That's the first triple for Mark Moore, by the way. Hey, email from our buddy Isaac Persley. Tuning in the Red Hawks, rooting them on. And he can't wait for baseball season to start, Jess. He's uh, the bat boy for the McDonald's Fighting Squirrels in Charleston, Missouri. Well, he sees a lot of baseball. You better he? believe it. Branson with a jumper, no good. And it's out. And it's going to be off of Simo. I think DQ Nicholas may have touched that last. It'll go to the Gorlocks. 49-45. Simo cannot pull away, at least not yet. 12-18 to play. Gorlocks trying to pull off an upset. What's interesting, Jess, when a Division Three or non-Division One plays a Division One, it actually does not go on their record. This is technically an exhibition game for Webster, but it counts for Simo. Kind of an odd quirk in basketball. Philip Russell. It's a four-on-one for the Red Hawks. Nicholas to the rim and the finish. Four-on-one. You've got to attack the rim, and that's what Nicholas did. Sure did. 51-45. The lead is six. Into the game. Javane Nugent. First time we've seen Nugent. He'll take it to the rim, and as he tried... To flip it in, it was off the mark and a follow dunk by Carl Moore Jr. We well, got off the floor on that one, and that cuts the lead to four. And we'll get a little hand check foul. I think it is coming up on Moore. One much. 11 20 on the second half clock here at the Show Me Center. Two o'clock. Start time today. The SEMO women will play here at 2 o'clock tomorrow against Harris Stowe. Open look for Dylan Branson in the left corner. No good. The Red Hawks are now 2 for 21 from three point range. Eric, that little tic tac foul you called while going on 34 really hurts Webster. That's our leading rebounder with 11, and he's out of the game. And Brown four. picks up a loose ball and scores. He's got 22. It's a two point game. Webster has erased a nine-point deficit and cut it to two at the moment. Philip Russell started right, picks up the dribble, slides the pass right. Eric Reed jump stop, drops it low for Manny Patterson. Patterson kicks it right perimeter. Dylan Branson feed the middle. It's Patterson to the left hand, missed the layup. And a foul coming up on the Red Hawks, and it's on Dylan Branson. And the Gorlocks can tie the game or take the lead here, 51-49. You know, I was talking about Moore leaving the game with four fouls and 11 rebounds, and he had seven offensive rebounds in this game, Eric. That's a tough loss for Webster. He's going to have to sit out for a while. He was playing well. Nate Jones re replaces him. And dribbling it off of his foot was Nugent. Red Hawks fortunate to come up with the turnover there. Trying to extend a two-point lead. DQ Nicholas on the right arc, lobs it down low for Patterson. A kick out, a three by Eric Reed, and finally a three-pointer goes down for the Red Hawks. They were two for 21 from three prior to that make by Reed. And a three by Moore. He's got the answer out front. Second triple for Moore. He's in double figures now with 12. Eric Reed into the lane. Floats it up short. And 
Webster going for the loose ball. We got a whistle. Loose ball foul. Get Nicholas on a foul there. DQ Nicholas called for the personal. And Nigel Russell coming off the Red Hawks bench. And we'll walk to the other end, but we will not have free throws. That is uh, team foul number six. So. <laughs> six fouls each. <laughs> One of our courtside fans, Matt Brucker, likes to talk with the officiating crew. Here comes DQ Nicholas, finishes off the turnover. And Matt Brucker said, uh, I'll shut up the rest of the way, and the official said, I doubt it. <laughs> I do too, don't you? <laughs> uh, good stuff. 56 Having fun at the ball game. On to the nine-minute mark. Holding is Wal or Marcus Becton. Plays out front for Jones. They're trying to get Brown a look. And now Brown's got it in the left corner. He'll be picked up by Chris Harris. Brown gets around Harris. And as he took it to the rim, is going to get called for a foul. Offensive foul drawn by Philip Russell. That's been a good one-on-one -on -one matchup tonight. Russell and Brown. Brown, by the way. 22 points. He is four of five from three-point range. Brown came in five for 24 from three. So he'd hit five threes all season. And he's got four tonight. And a foul inside on Webster's Jason Coleman, although the Memphis, Tennessee native is questioning that call. 56-52, Seymour with a four-point lead. 8.32 to play. Manny was going to slam her through that time, but I think the, you know, sometimes in basketball, the ball has really got a lot of air in them. And you remember how some of them you can't hardly get a good grip on them? It's kind of what it looked like with him. The ball slipped out of his hand, and he got it back, but took a whack. So he's at the line. And the free throw is there for Manny's had a Manny's had a tough day, and I don't mean – in basketball, a tough day of getting knocked around a lot and a lot of body contact. But he's a big guy. I think he can take it. So you're saying he may want to jump in the hot tub. Well, after if he made game. that first shot, he wouldn't have took the whack, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to be at the free throw line. <laughs> Next foul shot is there for Patterson. He got his points the hard way, I'll say that. Extends the Red Hawk lead to six, 58-52. Win Brown, Jr., Went to Bartlett High School in Memphis. Another three-pointer. No good, but he's fouled by DQ Nicholas. Uh, boy, he had a chance for a four-point play there. That ball almost went in, so he's going to get three free throws. It's amazing with Wynn Brown, Jess. I mentioned it. He made five three-pointers all season. In six games, he had five three. He's hit four today. And just about hit that one and got fouled on the play, so... 80% foul shooter, but he misfires on the first. That was nearly uh, an air ball. One more coming here for Wynn Brown. Spells his first name, W-Y-N-N-E. Second free throw is good. He'll get one more. He was fouled while shooting a three. It's 23 for Brown. That's a good first name for an athlete, Jess Win. That's why you play, right? Well, you better believe it. That's a great name. One more. Got it. 24 points for Win Brown. 58-54. The lead is four. Every time Simo threatens to pull away, Webster has an answer. Nigel Russell. Works his way by Beckton on the baseline. Kicks it into the right corner for Chris Harris. Misfires the three. And a foul coming up on Simo. And wow. Third foul assessed. And, in fact, the guy that got cut is out, Matt Moore. So, Beckton will go to the free throw line, and he misses. Rebounded by Nigel Russell. And 
a shot inside won't fall for the Red Hawks. Wind Brown throw it down court to Hawkins and a block at the rim by Russell. No goaltending was whistled. What a block. Three ball Russell off the front of the iron. Offensive board Patterson throws it into the backcourt for a turnover. And it will go back to Webster who trails by just four. Brad Korn will get his leading scorer to the scores table, Eric Reed. And he'll check in for DQ Nicholas. That's a beautiful block by Russell, wasn't it? I mean, he came out of nowhere. It looked like an easy layup. It was a terrific block. Would have made it a two-point game had that uh, block not occurred. Win Brown working on Eric Reed wide left. Drives down to the baseline. Reed recovers defensively. Brown throws up an air ball. It's tipped and ran down by Patterson. Here come the Red Hawks leading by four. 58-54. We approach seven minutes to play. Deep three, Eric Reed. Rimmed off. And pulling the rebound was Marcus Becton. Boy, every time the Red Hawks threaten to pull away, Jess. Webster has an answer. Let's see what the Gorlocks have on this trip. We're under seven to play in the game. The lead is four for Simo. Becton bounces low for Jones, spins in against Patterson, could not finish. Banked it a little strong, and then Patterson and Russell battle each other for the Red Hawk rebound. Each one of them wanted credit for that. Do you get a half a rebound? Like I don't know. A, who's going to get credit for that half rebound? A, half a sack. They both had yeah. it. Little give and go. Manny down the lane for the layup. Manny finally got one. He didn't get contested. Hey, wow. He's been knocked around a lot in this game, but that one was free and easy. And Patterson got to be careful. Jesse's playing with four fouls. He's working on Nate Jones, who's got it at the head of the key. Hands it off. Wittichek is checked back in. Jason, uh, or Jacob Wittichek. Hawkins to the baseline for Webster. Misfired on the jump shot and ran down by Manny Patterson. Red Hawks can extend a six point lead. Philip Russell comes down the right side of the lane, gives it up to Reed. A three, bang from the right corner, Eric Reed. And a timeout for Webster. The lead is. Dangerous point in the game here for Webster. They trail by nine. And they brought in both Moors back in the game, one with four fouls. And one uh, just hit a couple threes this half. Red Hawks come up with a loose ball. Cross court pass, DQ Nicholas. Knifing his way to the paint. Jumps it in the left corner. Good ball movement. Eric Reed with a three. Oh, he's feeling it. Eric Reed Jr. And Simo has a 12 point lead. His third triple here in the second half. Boy, that's what a coach loves. When you move the ball around like Southeast just did on that sequence, and then it winds up with a swish. That's really satisfying. Matt Moore gives it up to Brown. Into the left corner it goes. Jason Coleman and a steal for Dylan Branson, and then he's bumped. Foul coming up on Coleman. the fifth foul on Coleman and he will check out Dylan Branson is 0 for 2 this year from the free throw line and he's now 0 for 3 as he missed that one and we'll go the other way we got Russell on the foul there Nigel 66 54 we'll see Hawkins go to the line. Stephen Hawkins. Transferred from junior college, went to Patrick Henry Community College from Cape Coral, Florida. So he's gone from Jess, Cape Coral to Cape Girardeau. And the free throw is there for the lefty. Hawkins.
Shunches two free throws in their first six games. Boylocks are one and five. Hawkins hits both free throws. He's got six points off of the Webster bench. The lead is 10 for Simone. Accelerating into the paint is Nicholas. He finishes at the rim and the foul. Three point opportunity for DQ. He's one for two from the line. DQ's today. got that burst of speed right on that first step. Top of the circle and all at once he's under the goal. And DQ hits the free throw. Three point play to extend the lead to 13. This is Simo's largest lead of the game. We're just in front of our final media timeout, 69-56. Accelerating down to the baseline was Marcus Becton. He got bumped by Nigel Russell, I believe. That'll be the fourth on Nigel. See what Brad Korn wants to do about it. Patterson coming back in the game to replace Russell. Marcus Becton from Chicago hits the first free throw. And he'll have another one here, up by 13. And that one goes. Actually, it's an 11 point game. Becton got them both. 416 on the game clock. Eric Reed finds DQ Nicholas. Reed uh, got knocked on the seat of his pants, but he's up. Chris Harris, head of the circle, swings it right. Another three by Reed. Oh, he is feeling it. Eric Reed, his fourth second half triple. 26 points for the Red Hawks' leading score. Boy, he doesn't need much daylight to get that shot off, does he, Jess? No, and he gets such good extension, such height on his shots. I mean, he's, he's a throwback. He with plays that way bigger than his height. Jumper. It's a true jump shot. He really elevates on that shot. Elbow jump shot by Hawkins. That's strong, and Eric Reed corrals the rock. 72-58, Dylan Brands into the baseline, finishes with the left hand with the reverse. Eric Reed, the assist, Dylan Branson, his fourth points. 16-point lead for Southie, 74-58, 3.05. Largest lead at 16. Win Brown down the lane, got around Patterson, who may have altered the shot. Brown couldn't finish. Baseball pass down for Branson. He'll try and track down the loose ball, but stepped out of bounds. Group tour, concert or sporting event, small business meeting, or a large convention. Evansville has a fun, friendly... Simo's 16-point lead is their largest of the game. And we're under the three-minute mark. Webster has made the Red Hawks work hard here today. Hawkins out front. Works around the screen, pulls up from 17. Missed the jumper, Manny Patterson. Will grab his ninth rebound of the game. Eric Reed, who has 26 points. Pass to Patterson, who bobbled, but regains control. Finds Nicholas. His three is off the mark. The Gorlocks will bring it up. Wynn Brown has been uh, quiet lately, but he does have a team high 24 points today. Jacob Wittishek. Marcus Becton pulls up from just inside the foul line and knocks down the 13 foot jumper. It's the first field goal for Becton today. 74 60, the lead is 14. Stay tuned after the game on the radio side. 
talk it over with Red Hawks head coach Brad Korn. Misfiring from three point range is Chris Harris. And we get a whistle. Eric Reed will check out probably for the final time. Excellent game today for Reed. Well, it looked like he was checking out. Coming back in, it's Patterson who's checking out. And Patterson's got nine rebounds, 14 points, and almost got a rebound just then for number 10. Wynn Brown, left hand dribble against DQ Nicholas. Accelerates right and hands it off for Hankins. Hawkins. Now Brown, an open look for three. Left it short. Eric Reed clears. A minute 13 to play. Red Hawks will climb back to the 500 mark, four and four, and get ready for the Evansville Purple Aces on Wednesday. Red Hawk women in action at 2 o'clock tomorrow here. Eric Reed, that three-pointer was a little strong. That Evansville game is a 6.30 tip-off Wednesday. Three-pointer won't fall, and we'll get out of bounds. Good hustle there by Eric Reed. Don't want him to get hurt. Email from Soretta Kirk says a shout-out to Carl Moore, Jr. and the Webster basketball team. I see you all the way from Dubai. How about that? Air Force Base. Thanks for the email and thanks for your service. Tuning in the game in Dubai, Jess. You didn't think we had any fans in Dubai, did you? No. <laughs> 74 60. Well, the Moore, the pair of Moors have played well yeah. for Webster today. Win Brown to the line with 40 seconds to play. And it is. Glad to see the cut on Mark Moore wasn't that bad, I, I don't think. So could you tell where he was cut? It Was it around the eye? Or? It looked like it was. Yeah. Well, they sure got the blood stopped. Let's see, first responders appreciation game here today. And the free throw is there. Well, the first responder from Mark Moore did a good job. Don't you think? Yeah, the SEMO trainer got out there, helped to control the bleeding, got the bleeding stopped, and he was able to re-enter. 18 to shoot, 28 on the game clock. DQ Nicholas dribbling out front, just running some clock. Red Hawks lead it by 12, 74-62. Nigel Russell explodes to the baseline and draws a foul. Jez, we're told the wheel of Andy's number was in the 90s today, so the Red Hawks are not going to get there. No free Andes. I know that disappoints you. I usually write that down before the game, you know, and I didn't do it today. Dylan Branson retrieving and getting the block shot. Good hustle by Branson. After Nigel Russell hit both free throws. Seven seconds to play. First ever meeting between the Gorlocks and the Red Hawks. Dribble drive and the final basket going to be made by Marcus Becton as he flipped up the layup and the Red Hawks will run it out. Simo back to 500. Fourth victory. They knock off 